I'm Dawn. And hi, I'm Cindy, and welcome to Pearls of Liberty, December 15th, 2012. This is kind of a sad day just because of events of yesterday regarding a school shooting. And this is the, I think it's about the third public shooting in about two weeks, maybe three weeks. And the, the emotions about something like this just tend to build when one is stacked on, right on top of the other and, and the emotions become stacked. And we are thinking some of the same things that you've heard us say about um, when the uh, Batman theater shooting occurred. But we, we do want to say that we are very sad for families who have experienced loss. We personally don't see a correlation between the public being more safe and having tighter gun regulations. In fact, it's really quite the opposite. Yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, people are more and more polarized about the whole issue of gun control as these events surface and people have immediate reactions and one of the immediate reactions is gosh we sure need to to have more gun control laws so this won't happen again but that's a, a feel-good gut reaction that can make you think oh now we're safe when we're really as Cindy said becoming less safe the the more we take weapons of self-defense away from the common people and only put them in the hands of the government or the police and that just ensures we'll have a more totalitarian society instead of a more free society so while we feel horrible for the victims and for the 20 children that are dead we have to remember that a free society is going to have consequences and we need to start thinking in terms of holding people responsible for their actions, not how can we have laws that will make everything perfect and damage free because that's never going to happen. So it's all about responsible behavior and and really putting the fear of God in in people who are contemplating heinous crimes. So. This is really a crisis of culture that we're in the middle of right now, and there are no idealistic, realistic solutions that have to do with, with passing laws. It just has to do with the moral fiber of our country, our nation, and unfortunately, when you have a culture that is as zombified as we are, full of TV heads, fluoride heads, that where violence is glamorized and consequences are minimized then you have and we have an increasing number of people on psychotropic drugs SSRIs, serotonin reuptake inhibitors that just cause this explosive violent behavior it's uh, right there in the, the, the guidelines the secondary effects of these things that, that never should be prescribed for more than several weeks at a time at the most so uh, this is the kind of thing that that we're going to have happening in society until we regain our moral compass and and that doesn't come through legislation that can only come for through personal revival and works of the heart and uh, on on each of us taking these things to heart individually and the the heroes that we hold up in society being those that will stand up for and fight for those that are not able to stand up for and fight for themselves and that's that's historically what America has been but it's a it's a sad day when events like this happen and it we need to come to the point again where we accept responsibility for behavior and don't try to generalize it and say well, collectively, we just need to get rid of all our guns and that everything's going to be okay. No, it's much deeper than that. Yeah, I think, I think sometimes it's easy to have that knee-jerk reaction, well, the problem is the guns. But in Chicago, every month there are 42 murders. 
and many more people are injured by gunshot wounds and guns are illegal in Chicago. So people who believe this is a solution are not really considering the broader implications and really not seeing reality. Right, and the whole idea of the people saying, if your reaction is this, oh my gosh, they're gonna use this event to take away our guns, then oh, you know, you've got warped thinking, people are coming out with that accusation on Facebook posts and, and stuff like that. And I have to say in response to that, that if you don't at this point realize that the forces of evil and tyranny in the government cabal are not going to try to use events like this to disarm the American people, you're not living in the real world. You're not seeing what's happened to our country. And that's really unfortunate. You know, people um, have this idea that statism or more laws is going to make everything perfect. And, and no, it's not. But we need, it, it is a healthy thing to realize how psychopaths and people with power can manipulate the situations like this and that's exact we do need to be thinking along those lines it's not paranoid to think that way it's it's realistic to recognize that that's the world we live in unfortunately well and we we have to we don't have to we're wise if we are always scanning um, somebody uh, responded to a Facebook comment of mine and said I feel sorry for you because you're so afraid and my response was, I'm not afraid, I'm vigilant. And if we, if we all had been vigilant, if we'd all been on our guard, we wouldn't have come to this place as a nation. And Peter said uh, in his book that he wrote, in the, one of his book, two books that he wrote in the Bible, he, said, he wrote um, that we should be vigilant because... Our enemy, the devil, roams about like a lion looking for someone to devour. And I, I don't really want, you know, one who gets devoured if I can help it. I don't want my family to get devoured. I don't want my community to be devoured. So the answer to not being devoured by the lion, which is representative of the devil, of evil, is uh, to be on guard and to be vigilant. Yeah, the famous quote, the, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance, or usually put the other way around, the, the eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. And unfortunately, in the climate today, eternal vigilance looks a lot like paranoia. It's not, but that's what the mainstream media likes to paint it as because the people that don't want you to be vigilant about protecting your liberty want to label you as being fearful or paranoid. Absolutely. And we want to mention a few other issues just for comparison's sake. One is Waco. 21 children under the age of 16 were killed by our government. Just boom. Their homes were invaded, they were shot dead. Another concern is the UN peacekeeping missions and the huge numbers of children. I couldn't even find a statistic because nobody wants to write about that. But we know that it's it's just makes sense that when uh, various places are bombed, Libya, wherever, these are cities. People live there. There are children there. And there are certainly images, if you go search online, that I really don't, am not looking for, but you can find images of children who have been devastatingly injured by UN peacekeeping missions. And that's something that, these things are, our government, our taxes, 
are paying for these horrible things to be done. And nobody's on the nightly news beating the drum for these children who have been murdered and injured. And we are, our, our priorities are all goofed up. Yeah, not to mention the children that have been killed by the drones that have been made famous by President Barack Obama and he's the, the drone war president. The guy with the tear in his eye over the, 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 the killings in Newport is not at all remorseful about the collateral damage to these terrorists in foreign lands. So it's, there is real tragedy, but let's not lose sight of the fact that there are other very tragic things going on that we can do something about if we shine the light on them. So you are the one that decides what you can focus on. That's how we have the power. So don't ignore the stuff like drone killing of innocent children. And Don mentioned SSRIs. John Rappaport would like for the focus to be on some of the doctors who have been treating these, these people who have gone off the deep end and SSRIs, it's a, it's a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. That's how they work to, pr to prevent depression. So when your body is not finding the serotonin that it, that it created because the reuptake uh, portion of the brain is blocked, by, is inhibited, the body produces more serotonin and you can have, if you're under the influence of these drugs, you can have what's called a serotonin storm where suddenly you're, you're just overwhelmed by these chemicals that have been blocked for a long time by SSRIs and the consequences can be devastating and originally a friend who's a doctor told us that these drugs were only intended to be taken for a short period of time, but you have people who have been on them for years and years. And we see the effects as we, as we see these killings and the mothers who have killed their children, driven them into lakes, various, you know, drowned them in the bathtub. Many of them, and I don't mean just, you know, 51%, a large percentage of them have been under the influence of SSRIs. So, and Don mentioned something about um, Alex Jones, and we, we wanted to touch this week on rumblings that we've heard. Friends have sent us emails, there are back and forths on Facebook with some names like Mark Dice. People criticizing Alex Jones some people accusing Alex Jones of being a disinfo agent, people accusing Alex Jones of all sorts of things, and frankly, these accusations just do not ring true with us. Right, they really don't. The, the fruit of Infowars.com across the spectrum from, you know, guests that are on this end and on that end of the left-right scale of you know in traditional thinking and all kinds of other things. Um, it, it's it's good fruit. The he's bringing people together in the liberty movement and the truth movement to be able to look at serious issues. Um, he has a flamboyant personality, and that offends some people. That doesn't wash well with some people. That, and I think this is a common mindset that's a, a problem today where people think that if uh, that you can't be passionate about the truth and that that somehow indicates you're imbalanced well no an emotional reaction to the horrible state of things in the world is is healthy it's normal we need to learn how to get upset about these things because we're that frog in the boiling water that has just not reacted until it's too late or almost too late depending on how things turn out and I think Alex is helping give people the courage to punch through 
into reality and to face the things that they've been in denial about for a long, long time. And that's that's good. So it's I think it's a style thing. I also think that people envy success or don't understand it and think that the 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 cabal controlled media is the real thing and and you know, no, it's all backwards. And it, it's easy to poke at somebody and say, oh, you know, pull it, pull them down. There's, it's like the the crabs that are trying to crawl out of the pot. They'll pull each other down, and they won't let each other get pushed up. But we want to acknowledge Alex for the great American that he is, and helping alert and awake people to what's going on. He's a modern day Paul Revere, and I don't think I'd be off base either if I'd say he's you know, along the order of the biblical prophets. He doesn't try to focus on religion, but if you look at many of the Old Testament prophets, their call to awakening was much more political than we recognize it is today. We think it's all about, well, the, the, the people have strayed from God, and he's calling it back to God, and yeah, that's true, but it was all in a political context. I'm talking about the, the generalization of the Old Testament prophets, where often there would be uh, political events going on, and the prophet would be calling the people back to God, saying, yeah, these are happening because you've strayed. And that's real similar what's, to what Alex has done. He's calling us back to the principles of liberty and freedom and justice that America is founded on, and saying, look how we've strayed from these things. Look how these people have gotten you off track. And I think that that it's a great thing that more people are discovering InfoWars and finding out about this message and putting it in their own words, in their own context, and other other similar things are springing up through the alternative media today. Many blogs that I scan through on a daily basis, great stuff. Um, and a lot of it uh, goes back to the work of Alex or it's tied to it. And it, we're all working together and we don't want to be pulling each other down. We want to be working together at, because we do have a common enemy, those that are trying to enslave us. And that they have a plan that has been in place and working well for a long time. Now they're being exposed. So now is the time to shine the light on those guys and not turn on each other. Yeah, and... I was a frog in a boiling pot, and there were a few different people who poked at me, but Alex was definitely one of the ones uh, who poked at me until I woke up and I jumped out, and hopefully I wasn't out of the boiling pot into the fire. But this week, there has been some news that's been kind of overlooked because of uh, the events in Connecticut. Many people who follow the funds that are supposed to soon be released, the prosperity packages, are encouraged and there have been some significant bank arrests, uh, indictments, Things do seem to be happening behind the scenes, which is great news. And there are two funds that are interesting to think about, maybe read about. One is the Leo Wanta funds, and another is the Neil Keenan funds. And Neil Keenan made a new YouTube video this week talking about the funds and some ideas that he has for using them once they're released soon. Yeah, these are both uh, funds that are in the, on the order of trillions of dollars that would make a major shift in global finance. And they are both, both of these individuals are behind the scenes uh, trying, they're, they're the funds that they were responsible for or involved with had been stolen by the bad guys and they're going through legal actions to try to get them back. And the roots of them are completely different. Um, the Neil Keenan funds are have to do with Indonesia and Sukarta and they have a, a date that goes back to the era of John F. Kennedy and the Leo Wanta funds, those were 
actually money that was used to help bring down the Soviet Union and then it was stolen by the bad guys. So that took place under Reagan. Very interesting stories and we were providing links here for people that don't, don't already know about these things. Well worth looking into and very very hopeful because um, the, the things that we read on a daily or weekly basis all indicate that the the bad guys, the bankers, the cabal, the dark cabal that's been controlling this world domination agenda for centuries is running out of room and running out of time. Um, we don't tend to think that there's going to be an instantaneous breakthrough like many people were thinking back in April or May or so that there was going to be some major announcement. Now there may be some announcement but it and there may be some shift. We don't necessarily think the change is going to be real suddenly that may be more gradual than we previously thought. I think Benjamin Fulford alluded to that in one of his recent blogs. So, but nevertheless things are moving in the right direction and we want to be encouraged about that and, and encourage you to you know, keep up hope. Don't get discouraged when all these negative things happen. We need to um, do our best to enter into a positive attitude and many people who call themselves light workers and uh, tend to be new age type people that that see what's going on and want peace aren't necessarily approaching things from a Christian point of view but they recognize the importance of positive thinking but not de deluding ourselves into thinking the world is is better than it is the emphasis there is good it's on being positive so that we can increase our vibrational energy if you will to align with the forces of good and these things are are real in the unseen realms, I believe. There really are uh, ways that you can set up a, a spiritual climate that enables the forces of good, angelic forces, to, to function at more optimally. And likewise, going into fear empowers the enemy of our souls. So we want to encourage you to be positive in the midst of times that may be upsetting. And we will not be doing another weekly video before December 21st, so hope you come through that with flying colors, emanating love, and finding yourself if something wild happens in a good place. And the Truther Girls put up a video this week about the Mayan calendar and some possibilities that they would like to consider, that Sonia would like to consider as the 21st approaches and we don't necessarily feel that anything terribly dramatic is going to happen but it never hurts to have your heart prepared anytime you get in a car. could be the last time, I mean not to be negative, but we just we're not absolutely guaranteed tomorrow. So live today as if it was maybe your last this week, as if, you know, something remarkable was going to happen on the 21st. And we have the link to Sonia's video, so we hope you enjoy that. And hope you have a blessed week filled with love and joy and peace. And remember to see the world the way that it really is. Walk your walk. See yourself in it. Walk your walk. You are the one that you're waiting for.